I applied for the green card lottery and won two times. I helped my brother, I guided him through the process and he applied for the green card lottery and he won. After that, four of my friends that I personally advised on what they needed to do before application ended up winning the green card lottery. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Nafula. If you've not subscribed to my channel, uh, please go ahead and subscribe. And if you've already subscribed to my channel, I just want to say thank you for subscribing and thank you for watching my videos. If this is your first time here, just make sure you are watching my other videos. I already did a video on how to edit the pictures. I went over the requirements and I went over a lot of things that are important uh, before you apply for the DV lottery. So just make sure you watch all the other videos before you ask questions because sometimes the questions you're asking I have already addressed in my previous videos. Also, I always say in my videos, I just wanted to give you a reminder that I'm not a legal lawyer. I'm not a legal attorney. All the advice that I'm giving on this uh, channel is from experience. So if you have questions then and you need legal advice or you need to double check anything, make sure you contact an immigration lawyer or an immigration uh, expert to advise because I'm just giving all this advice based off of my personal experience only. Also, I know the green card is opening next week. So what I'm going to advise as much as you've listened to everything that I've said on this uh, channel, make sure you go to the DV lottery and under the DV lottery, you can click on instructions to apply for the DV lottery. All the instructions are there. All the instructions are uh, clearly stated so you can go read through them um, make sure you understand and if you have any questions about anything that you're reading on there you can contact a legal uh, attorney to advise on what you need to do so today I'll be addressing a few questions that have been asked multiple times and I feel like I need to clarify before people apply for the green card lottery I'm gonna do three of them one of them I'm, not, I'm gonna cover eligibility the second one I'm going to cover a city of birth and then the third one I'm going to cover how you enter your name and hopefully if we get enough time I will finish up on the form if I don't finish up today then it will be on my video on Tuesday. So the first thing I'm going to um, be covering today is eligibility. I already covered eligibility in my previous videos but I think I wasn't clear enough so people are getting confused a little bit. Uh, so I wanted to do like, you know, to at least explain and also make sure you're going to the website and you're reading the instructions for yourself. But I'm going to just do a brief explanation on eligibility. To figure out if you're eligible for the DV program, you have to check the DV lottery site, the website, to see if your country is eligible to apply. So if your country is eligible to apply, then you claim eligibility based off of your country of birth so for example if you have like you know uh, citizenship in two countries and one of them you're a citizen because you were born there on the DV lottery you're supposed to claim eligibility based off of the country of birth so it needs to be clear that when you're applying for the green card lottery the country of birth is where you should be claiming eligibility I'm gonna use myself as an example I was born in Kenya but I'm also a citizen of the United States. So I'm a citizen of Kenya and I'm a citizen of the United States. So if in this case, if I was to apply for the DV lottery today, for example, I was a citizen of another country other than the US. So say I was a citizen of Kenya and a citizen of uh, Rwanda. If you're claiming eligibility, Kenya is eligible to apply, Rwanda is eligible to apply. Both these countries are eligible to apply, but then when you claim eligibility, you claim eligibility off of your country of birth, not the other country where you're a citizen because you already qualify as being eligible based off of your place of birth. So just to be clear, when you're applying for the DV lottery, always claim eligibility from your place of birth your country of birth that is if your country is eligible to participate in the DV lottery your Kenyan Kenya participates claim eligibility eligibility as a Kenyan you are Ugandan Uganda 
is eligible to apply for the DV lottery, claim eligibility as Ugandan. I hope I'm clear on that. Okay, so this is another situation and this happens only if you're in Africa, the country that's not eligible to apply is Nigeria. Nigeria is not eligible to apply for the DV lottery. Now that I've mentioned that Nigeria is not eligible to apply for the DV lottery, how can you apply for the DV lottery if you were born in Nigeria? Nigeria is not eligible to apply for the DV lottery. But then you can apply for the DV lottery if you're born in Nigeria. And then I'm gonna explain how. There is two ways you can claim you can apply for the DV lottery as much as your country of birth is not eligible. You can still apply, but then there's two ways that can make you qualify to apply for the DV lottery. So if your country of birth is not eligible to participate in the DV lottery, you have to meet a certain criteria for you to have the ability to qualify to apply for the DV lottery. And there's two ways. So for example, if you're born in Nigeria and you're not eligible to participate for the DV lottery, but then you got married to somebody who was born in a country that's eligible to apply for the DV lottery. I'm gonna give you an example. You are born in Nigeria. You meet a Kenyan lady and then you get married. You can apply for the DV lottery. So when you're answering the questions, you say your place of birth is Nigeria. Are you claiming eligibility as a Nigerian? You say no, but then what country are you claiming eligibility? You claim eligibility as a Kenyan because your wife is Kenyan. So because you're born in Nigeria, but then your spouse was born in a country that's eligible to participate uh, in the DV lottery, you can claim eligibility using your spouse, your spouse's country of birth, which is eligible. But then here is a trick. So to claim eligibility using your wife, you have to include your wife in the application. That's number one. So on the application, you enter, you can be the principal applicant, you enter your information, but then it's a must that you enter your wife's information because you're claiming eligibility off of her country of birth. It's not yours, it's hers. So in that case, you have to enter her information. And number two, you have to make sure that she agrees to immigrate with you in the United States. So if you claimed eligibility using your wife, like you're a Nigerian, you got married to a Kenyan, and now you're using her to claim eligibility, then she has to immigrate to the United States with you. You have to enter the United States together. So that is the first way. You are born in a country that's not eligible to apply, but then you're married to somebody whose country is eligible to apply. You can apply using their country, but then they have to immigrate to the United States with you. That's the first way you can apply for the DV lottery if you're from a country that's not eligible. Here is the second way. You were born in Nigeria, but both your parents are not Nigerian nationalities. So maybe my parents are Kenyan. My father is a Kenyan. My mother is a Kenyan. And then they decide, hmm, let's go and visit Nigeria for some reason. My mother is pregnant with me, goes to Nigeria to visit, and then she gets there. Boom, she goes into labor and gives birth in Nigeria. So there you are, born in Nigeria. Your mother is not Nigerian. Your father is not Nigerian, but you ended up in Nigeria. You were born in Nigeria. And then when you look into, you know, you look at the DV lottery, it says, if you're born in Nigeria, Nigeria is not eligible. But then you can apply for the green card lottery, claiming eligibility using your parents' place of birth if they were born in a country which is eligible. So 
my two parents who are Kenyan gave birth to me in Nigeria. I was born in Nigeria. I cannot apply, but then because my parents are Kenyan and not Nigerian, I can still apply for the DV lottery and claim eligibility based off my parents place of birth. But then here's a catch. So if one of the parent is a resident or a citizen of Nigeria, this does not apply to you. Then you are, then you cannot apply. But then if both of your parents, they were there for like a short period of time, they were just doing something there real quick and then you just happen to be born in Nigeria but then in the real sense both your parents are Kenyan and Kenya is eligible you apply for the green card lottery you say place of birth Nigeria claiming eligibility as a Nigerian from the place of birth you say no and where you're claiming eligibility you'll say Kenya because your parents are Kenyan so there's two ways if you're born in Nigeria you can qualify to apply for the DV lottery. So one, if you're married to a wife who was born in a country that's eligible, then if you're Nigerian, you can apply using your wife's country of birth to claim eligibility. Two, if you are a child who was born in Nigeria by both parents who are not Nigerian citizen, or Niger residents of Nigeria at the time of your birth, you can claim eligibility using your parents' place of birth if that country is eligible to apply for the green card lottery. I hope I made myself clear. Because the way I was putting it before, people were misinterpreting it like, okay, if you're just a citizen of another country, uh, then you can use eligibility based on that country. No. If you're Nigerian, born in Nigeria, but then both your parents are Kenyan citizens, so you're a Kenyan citizen, you can apply eligibility based off of Kenya. So you're a citizen of Kenya, you're a citizen of Nigeria, or if you're not even a citizen of Kenya, you can claim eligibility based off of your parents' place of birth or your wife's place of birth if you're born in a country that's not eligible to apply. I hope I've explained it enough. Please remember to go to the DV Lottery website so that you can read all this for yourself so that you make a judgment based off of how you understand. Or you can contact an immigration lawyer and then they can explain to you in better words. The second most frequently asked question is about your city of birth. Some people are coming to me, they're like, you know, other people advise you to uh, put the city of birth where you were born, the way it is, even if, even if it's not a city, you can put it. If you want to do it that way, that's on you. That's a, like it's upon your, your own discretion to put whatever you want to put on there. But then I'm just going to break down the city of birth. And after you listen to this, just make your own judgment. Do whatever you feel is best for you. If you're listening to somebody who was born in America tell you that you have to have a city of birth, then they're wrong. In America, they have states and all states have cities. So everybody's address has a city. I was born in Kenya and I can tell you this, there's places where there is no city. And I happen to be born in one of those places. And I'm gonna break it down for you. I was born in Musikoma. Musikoma is in Kandui. Kandui is in Bungoma district. Bungoma district is in the Western province. And I can tell you this, we don't have a city. I know it sounds like it's weird. If you ask people from Kenya, they will tell you Bungoma, what's your city? You're like, I live in Bungoma, what's your city? We don't have a city. There's only a bunch of cities, Nairobi, Mombasa. Uh, I think there's uh, Kisumu, uh, Nakuru, and there's one more, I think. We don't have cities everywhere in Kenya. And this is what you should understand. And I will go to the computer and I will help you out with this. So I was born in Bungoma, right? Somebody is telling me, put Bungoma as the city of birth. Go to Google and type Bungoma and see what you find out. And on the question on the DV lottery, it says, 
a city of birth. And then after that question, it says, don't put a district, don't put a county, don't put a province, don't put a state. You are going to put a district in a place where they said, don't put a district. So now that I've explained that to you, it's upon you to make, uh, you know, you're the one applying, it's not me. When I applied, because I was born in Bungoma, I said, I selected city unknown. And it didn't affect me in any way. So if you're gonna put Bungoma as a city, that's on you. If you wanna put Bungoma as city unknown, again, that's on you. I just, you know, tell you what I did, and then you can just do whatever you feel that is best for you okay and then people will have questions i know there's there's a difference that's why i'm gonna explain both sides so maybe you're born in nairobi right you're born in a place maybe you're born in kawangware you're born in dagoreti you're born in kibera you're born in kiambu or you're born in isli you are born in isli which is in kamukunji kamukunji is in nairobi so if you're born in Kamukunji, what are you going to put as your city of birth? Nairobi. If you are born in Kiambu, because Kiambu, when you Google it, it will tell you it's a place that's in Nairobi. So your city of birth is going to be Nairobi. If you're born in Dagoreti, Dagoreti is in Nairobi city. So you can put Nairobi as a city. But then you're born in Webuye, do you have a city in Webuye? Absolutely not. So if you enter Webuye as a city, Webuye is not a city. You can't enter Kakamega because Kakamega is still not a city. You can't enter Kisumu because Kisumu is in Nyanza province and not Western province. So you're stuck with like, I'm in Webuye, what do I put? There's no city around where you are. And some people don't understand like in Kenya, there's regions where there's no city. You're stuck with your district, and your province. We come from way in the bushes, in the villages. And some villages, they don't have cities. And that is okay. You can put city unknown. So if you've been listening to an advice of somebody who was born in the United States, and they completely understand that everywhere there's cities, not everywhere has cities. There's some communities in Africa where they don't have a city. And I was born in a community where we didn't have a city. And some things is just like trying to understand the culture of somebody. You can read the culture of somebody or some, a certain uh, community in a book. But then when you go down there and you experience the culture, you realize how different it is. And it's the same thing. In the book, it might say, like, you know, you need to have a city, you town, and then a city, and then a state, and all that. But then in reality, you just go to a village in Kenya, like where I was born, and then you're like, hey guys, where is your city? And there's no city. Because we don't have one, we're just waiting for them to approve, maybe Kakamega to be a city uh, at some point, then you can say, oh, it's in Western province, so Kakamega will be my city, but it's not a city at this time. So if it's not a city, you might be safe putting something that's at least you're sure that the city is unknown than putting a city. What if like, you know, the system has like, you know, they know like if a city is a city. You're putting Bungoma, they're like, wait a minute. Bungoma is a city? Bungoma is like a little town, is a district. And they say do not enter district. So with this information, I'm just giving it to you. Whatever you do with it after this is on you. So the last question I've been getting is about the names. People are coming to me, they're asking me, I have two names, what should I put? I don't know, because guess what? You are the owner of the names, you know what's the first name and what's the last name. So your last name is usually a family name, like if you know you took your father's name, that's probably a last name. And then you have a given name, which is your first name. So if your name is Jacob Mwangi, but the Ambo. Jacob is your first name, Mwangi is your middle name, or the Ambo, because it's your father's name, is your last name. And if your name is Anne, Jenga, Jenga 
is your last name and Anne is your first name. So you know what your names are. So if you give me two names because I don't know you, I don't know if the last name is your father's name, I, I can't, I'm not able to tell. So the only person who knows what to put in the boxes is you because you know what your first name is and what's your last name. So and then if you don't have a middle name, you just click the box that says um, no middle name. And like I said, I'm not a legal advisor. What I'm giving you is through experience. I put city unknown and I still won. Some people probably they're not putting it and they still won. I don't know. I'm just giving whatever I did. So if you have, uh, you know, questions, you're still confused, you're welcome to go on the DV Lottery website and read all that information for yourself. And if you still have questions, I will advise you to contact a legal uh, immigration lawyer um, to advise you on what you need to do. So this Tuesday, we'll be completing the part two of the DV lottery application. So on Tuesday, we'll be doing the part two, and then on Wednesday, because it's opening, I think on the 5th, so the DV lottery is opening on, on October 5th to November 8th. So when it opens on the day it will open, I will do a little video on how to open the link and then I'll post it. So, and then the video will have the DV lottery link in the description, the video description. So if you just click on the video description at the bottom, there'll be a link that says apply DV lottery here. And then you click on the link and then you go and start applying. So to begin, I'm gonna just type Bungoma and we'll see what we come up. So when you type Bungoma, you see what shows up just from even Wikipedia. It just says Bungoma is a county town of Bungoma County in Kenya. So Bungoma is a county. So Bungoma is a county. So let me just pull up um, a copy of, so I just pulled up a copy of the DV lottery application. We already looked up Bungoma and Bungoma is a county and here where it says city where you were born it says enter birth city only you see these words here enter birth city only do not enter district county province or say state so you cannot put a district, a county, a province, or a state. And then we come back to Bungoma here, and clearly is a county. So if you enter Bungoma, which is a county, in a place where you're told clearly, do not enter a county. So I don't know, but for me, I would rather choose birth, city, unknown. I'd rather choose birth, city, unknown, then enter a county when I'm clearly told do not enter a county. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do like Kiambu. So when you uh, Google Kiambu, Kiambu here it says it's a town in Kiambu County, Kenya within Nairobi metropolitan region. So as much as Kiambu County is a county, it is within Nairobi region. And because Nairobi is a city, if you are born in Kiambu, you will enter Nairobi as your city. So that's the difference. Bungoma is a county, but we don't have a city. But Kiambu is a county but is in Nairobi city. So that's the difference. So I've already, you know, explained the difference between the two. And then you can just go ahead and uh, make your own judgment. I won the green card lottery, but how did I find out about the program? I found out about the program because somebody posted a link about it on Facebook. So literally I had a friend on Facebook and she posted about the green card lottery and then I applied and I won. So what am I trying to say here? 
So if you know that you have access to this information, it's important that you share with your family, your friends, and everybody else. Because even if they apply, it won't reduce your chances of winning. Everybody has an equal chance of getting selected. So even if you like send it to them and everybody applies, it won't reduce your chances of winning. Everybody has an equal chance of getting selected. So I'm just going to go over real quick on how you can share my videos with your friends and family. And you just go here. Like if you see now, I'm using my phone to watch uh, my video, which is playing in the background. So what are you going to do? You see down here, it says share. So you're going to click on the share. And then once you click on it, it brings you this thing here that says copy the link. And then, so you're going to go ahead and click copy the link. And then your link is copied. And then after that's done, you're going to go like to your Facebook. You can either X out of that, go to your Facebook and then create a post. And then once you create a post, you can just create and say, Hashtag apply DV lottery. Just like that. And then you're going to click enter and hold on to your screen and paste the link and make sure like, you know, up here you select public so that all your friends and people who are not your friends can still um, see the information. And then after that's done, then you just click the post right here. So you just click post. You're going to see the link right here. So for anybody who, you know, they don't know how to find the information. Once they click the videos, they will just, you know, learn about the green card lottery and apply. And the reason why Nigeria is not eligible for the program is because a lot of Nigerians are in America. And you know why Ameri Nigerians are in America? Because they like each other. They share information. When somebody knows, finds out how to get a scholarship, finds out how to get a green card, they go back home and they tell everybody. So the reason why they're successful is because they share information, which some of us, somebody gets information and they don't want to share with their, with their neighbors. They don't want to share with anybody. But sharing is caring. Sharing won't reduce your chances of winning. So make sure you either share on your Facebook. Another alternative, you can go to Twitter and then you go to Twitter and then you again, you just create a post and then you say you can post the link you just copied and then you can say hashtag whatever country you want you can do kenya i can do congo if i wanted to and then you just tweet and that way it gets to a lot of people so in other words what i'm trying to say if you get something that can help your neighbor having helping your neighbor is not going to reduce your chances of winning or in reduce your chances of getting successful normalize sharing information with your friends and family Thanks for watching.